All right. Here we are, the miracle work today. Miracle work, chapter 15. And we continue. So interesting how it continues. Like now the, <clears throat> the chapter is the holy instant and communication. It's really great. And the main subject and the main subject in in this chapter is actually a special relationship and guilt. So that's interesting. How does that come together? Like how how will this ever come together? How will how can we receive a clear okay, I'm a bit early I guess. How can we receive a clear vision regarding all these subjects? And so there's only one way to, to receive that, in fact, is to go through it and check it out and really take a look at what it's pointing at. Because uh, especially today, too, it's, it's um, asked of you to be attentive, to be really, say, alert in receiving what is being given and receiving what is given in words and given in sentences and ideas and this to to recognize for yourself what is necessary to enter into a holy instant to that what is the most natural thing to you well, why isn't that so natural at all it doesn't look like it when there's such a big description it seems like really difficult so what is what is behind all of that that we need to recognize or i need to recognize in my awakening and especially when it comes to relationships and to bodies and to special relationships and to real relationships and to guilt and to anger and to attack and murder and death and and all this it's like all these subjects are in fact um, something we take a look at and especially in this part of the chapter the holy instant and communication so communication needs to be whole needs to be whole to be real it needs to be whole like no exceptions no ifs and no buts and no um yeah there's no deal to be made here it is either that it is either communication or it is nothing and and that becomes more and more obvious reading this chapter now, before we do that, we, of course, have the opportunity to <coughs> have sufficient support. For instance, of the uh, Lesson 8 that we're going to, to uh, read for a moment, uh, Lesson 8 is uh, helping us to see all this too. <coughs> Just like at the end, the, say, the daily lesson today, is so perfectly written as if it was directly connected to to this section from chapter 15. Now, I, I couldn't believe it when I read it this morning. It's like, I cannot believe it, how much of the same is in there. As if, if you read this lesson, you actually got a summary of what is in the section that we're going to use today. So that's, that's sublime. It's, it's amazing, so beautiful. Now, I haven't read uh, Lesson 8 for a while, so I'm curious what is in there. But it might be extremely helpful today. Lesson 8 is this. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This idea is, of course, the reason why you see only the past. That was Lesson 7. No one really sees anything. He sees only his thoughts projected outward. The mind's preoccupation with the past is the cause of the total misperception, misconception, total misconception about time from which your seeing suffers. Your mind cannot grasp the present, which is the only time there is. It therefore cannot understand time and therefore cannot understand, in fact, anything. The only holy true thought one can hold about the past, that it is not here. To think about it at all is therefore to think about illusions. 
to think about time is just about the past, is therefore to think about nothing, about illusions. Very few minds have realized what is actually entailed in picturing the past or anticipating the future. Very few minds. I hope yours is part of that. The mind is actually blank when it does that, when it holds about the past. Because it is not really thinking about anything. The purpose of the exercises today is to begin to train your mind to recognize when it is not really thinking at all. Why thoughtless ideas preoccupy your mind, the truth is blocked. Recognizing that your mind has been merely blank, rather than believing that it is filled with real ideas, is the first step to opening the way to vision. The exercises for today should be done with eyes closed. This is because you actually cannot see anything, and it is easier to recognize that no matter how vividly you may picture a thought, you are not seeing anything. With as little investment as possible, search your mind for the usual minute or so, merely noting the thoughts you find there. Name each one by the central figure, or theme it contains and pass it on to the next. Introduce the practice period by saying, I seem to be thinking about this and this and this one and about that and about you name it. I seem to be thinking about this person, about this object or about this emotion and so on. But my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This can be done four or five times during the day until, uh, unless you find it irritates you. If you find it trying, three or four times is sufficient. You might find it helpful, however, to include your irritation or any emotion with the idea may induce in this mind searching itself. So you can even use your resistance to it as a part of the exercise. <clears throat> So I see, uh, let's do this for just, say, 30 seconds or so, not to overdo it. With as little investment as possible, this is the exercise, with as little investment as possible, search your mind for the usual minute or so, merely noting the thoughts you find there. And then you're going to name each one by the central figure in the thoughts or the, the central uh, subject. I seem to be thinking about, and then you end with, but my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I'll remember you of that later, when the exercise is over. Okay, so we, we do this exercise right now. I seem to be thinking about this one and this one. 
but my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts and I'm actually not thinking at all. My mind is actually blank when it does this. All right, so that is that is the starting practice for today. Wonderful. Okay, so this is this is the first part. You see, like, well, this is necessary for fission because most of the time, most of the time, you are say your mind is preoccupied with past thoughts and it's actually not thinking at all. But it's also not communicating, even though you might think you do. So this is important. Uh, this is important in our new discovery of what communication actually is and that's specifically where we're going to take a look at today in in this part of chapter 15 so it's called the christmas chapter and so far like this especially this part it takes a moment before the christmas gift is really coming into it so we first have to look at certain things before you can actually celebrate you can say like it, it needs a bit of preparation in order to come to your peace. It needs preparation and it's worth it. So that's why we do it. And it's like you cannot leave anything out. That's really how precise you could say, or how systematic the Course in Miracles is in undoing the mind of things that it's not only not using, but it's actually in the way of for you to come into direct communication with your creator without exception. You know, so and that's where your happiness lies. So you gotta you gotta make sure that you know what to let go of and what to release in order to empty your mind. So that's that's what we take a look at. So I'm I'm I uh, say bringing in the text, I put it into sheets like I just to have a real focus for every sentence. In fact, click, click, click. So here we are the holy instant and communication. See, and don't forget that this is all about the communication with your creator, like the direct communication. So that's that is really what this is about. So it's never just words or concepts or ideas that are being shared. No, this is actually a preparation for an, say, an uh, incredible experience that is totally yours. But you might not recognize it immediately. Or there might still be something in between that you had no idea about that you even put it there. So we take a look at the special love relationship to start with this. Beyond the poor attraction of the special love relationship and always obscured by it is the powerful attraction of the father for his son. You could say this is like there is no other love that can satisfy you because there is no other love than the love of the father for his son. There is no other love. So what is going on in a special love relationship? Because it appears to be love, right? Like if you look at your relationships, you might have a love relationship. And and so what what is that then, if it isn't perfect love? And there will be lots of examples in fact so this is the only love that is fully given and fully returned that makes it different and being complete like perfect love it asks nothing being wholly pure everyone joined in it has everything like it's all inclusive at the same time being wholly pure everyone joined in it has everything this is not the basis for any love relationship in which the ego enters. For every relationship on which the body embarks is special. The ego establishes relationships only to get something. And it would keep the giver bound to itself through a specific kind of glue named guilt. <laughs> The ego establishes relationships only to get something and it would keep the giver bound to itself through guilt. 
It is impossible for the ego to enter into any relationship without anger. For the ego believes that anger makes friends. This is not its statement, but it is its purpose. For the ego really believes that it can get and keep by making guilty. This is its one attraction. An attraction so weak that it would have no hold at all, except that no one recognizes it. For the ego always seems to attract through love and has no attraction at all to anyone who perceives that it attracts through guilt. Well, how does this work? The sick attraction of guilt must be recognized for what it is. For having been made real to you, it is essential to look at it clearly and by withdrawing your investment in it, to learn to let it go. No one would choose to let go what he believes has value, right? Yet the attraction of guilt has value to you only because you have not looked at what it is and have judged it as valuable completely in the dark. As we bring it to light, your only question will be why it was you ever wanted it. The sick attraction of guilt, it says here on top, the sick attraction of guilt must be recognized for what it is. Now we want to know what that is, because it becomes a bit like, okay, so what is it then? How does this work? No one would choose to let go what he believes has value. So how does that work then? So there's a bit of questioning coming up. For it is the ego's fundamental doctrine that what you do to others, you have escaped. The ego wishes no one well, but its survival depends on your belief that you are exempt from its evil intentions. It counsels, therefore, that if you are host to it, host to the ego, it will, be, it will enable you to direct the anger that it holds outwards and thus protecting you. Hmm. And thus it embarks on an endless, unrewarding chain of special relationship forged, forged out of anger and dictated, sorry, dedicated to but one insane belief that the more anger you invest outside yourself, the safer you become. It is this chain that binds the Son of God to guilt. And it is this chain the Holy Spirit would remove from his holy mind. In one way or another, every relationship which the ego makes is based on the idea that by sacrificing itself it becomes bigger. And the sacrifice, which it regards as purification, is actually the root of its bitter resentment for it would much prefer to attack directly and avoid delaying what it really wants. Yet the ego acknowledges reality as it sees it and recognizes that no one could interpret direct attack as love. Yet to make guilty is direct attack, but does not seem to be. For the guilty expect attack and Having asked for it, they are attracted to it. For each one thinks that he has sacrificed something to the other and hates him for it, yet this is what he thinks he wants. He is not in love with the other at all, he merely believes he is in love with sacrifice. And for this sacrifice, which he demanded of himself, he demands the other accept the guilt and sacrifice himself as well. Forgiveness becomes impossible, for the ego believes that to forgive another is to lose him. Wow. 
yet they only seem to be together. It's like in the relationship, in the special relationship, they only seem to be together. For relationships, to the ego means only that bodies are together. It is always physical closeness that the ego demands. And it does not object where the mind goes or what it thinks, for this seems unimportant. For as long as the body is there to receive its sacrifice, it is content. To the ego the mind is private and only the body can be shared. Whenever you are angry, you can be sure that you have formed a special relationship which the ego has blessed, quote unquote, for anger is its, quote unquote, blessing. Anger takes many forms, but it cannot long deceive those who will learn that love brings no guilt at all. And what brings guilt cannot be love and must be anger. All anger is nothing more than an attempt to make someone feel guilty. And this attempt is the only basis which the ego accepts for special relationships. But remember this, to be with a body is not communication. And if you think it is, you will feel guilty about communication and will be afraid to hear the Holy Spirit, recognizing in His voice your own need to communicate. The Holy Spirit cannot teach through fear. The union of bodies thus becomes the way in which you would keep minds apart, for bodies cannot forgive, they can only do as the mind directs. Forgiveness lies in communication as surely as damnation lies in guilt. It is the Holy Spirit's teaching function to instruct those who believe that communication is damnation, that communication is salvation. So it is the Holy Spirit's teaching function to instruct those who believe that communication is damnation, that communication is salvation. Here there is no concealment and no private thoughts. The willingness to communicate attracts communication to it, and it overcomes loneliness completely. And you understand that your completion is God's, whose only need is to have you be complete. For your completion makes makes you his in your awareness yeah so this was what i wanted to read and this is quite something i love it i love it for the clarity that it in fact gives but how do you recognize that your say ego-based relationships are actually based on guilt on sacrifice that is not so clear right away, but I give you a couple of examples that are kind of weird, but kind of good. <laughs> so, you find yourself at a funeral. You hear beautiful words about the deceased. You, you, everyone tells how much they loved him or her, how beautiful that was, and some great memories and all this. And actually, for quite some of them, it can really be that they're actually happy that he passed on. Like, well, he was a great guy, but I'm actually happy that he's gone. So these kind of things is, is also like what a special relationship is. And so that's one example. So the... And it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like you, you say you love someone and at the same time you hope that the person, like you're actually happy that the person is gone now, that you don't have to deal with him anymore. This is just something. It's like the, the temporalness of the ego relation, yeah, of the human relationships, the temporalness of it is, is just um, a killer in that sense. So there's no stability in it. And of course, there are exceptions in a certain sense, but I could say this is like 
if if you in your relationship experience perfect love then you also know that it's not bound by the two bodies together or the three or five like by the bodies together it's, it is not depending on the bodies like there's a f inherent freedom in experiencing perfect love it has not to do with a set defined couple with agreements with each other you know it's like no this has nothing to do with that so here in this chapter it says basically also it's like there's an exchange going on within the human relationship and we have all experienced this there's an there's a deal going on like an exchange there's a compensation going on you do this for me i do that for you and we keep each other safe by keeping something for ourselves and what i think like who is in a relationship this is these are just some questions like who is in a relationship where you fully expose what you're actually thinking in all honesty and like that to me was a whole new discovery to do it like not feeling um, guilty about what I was thinking or not feeling guilty to share but just needed to bring it out instead of keeping things from myself saying yes while I actually meant no um, being still with the person being angry at the person that it, it doubts you or it doesn't trust you you know these things like there's an emotional yeah chantage going on and and then at moments it's all fine and it can shift every moment again into fury like into into an anger because of you did just one step over the border and now i don't want to have anything to do with you get out of my house or whatever it is it's like see all that it has nothing to do with love or with communication like not at all communication is whole is real is is all inclusive it is not uh, making any differences it is not having some better than others or who knows what you know like any comparison is gone in it any kind of competition is gone too or any kind of uh, comparison between how much you love this one and how much you love that one so the the openness of uh, in in your new say communication relationship in your new holy instant it is not depending on with whom that is occurring because it is a recognition of the communication as one mind uh, it doesn't distinguish between this and that one you know so that is that's whole different and it also has no uh, set um, pattern about how the future will be or how to deal with each other like it has no no it's free to to yeah to follow that to follow your own to to follow the voice in fact like to come back to the to the present moment all the time instead of um, projecting something in the future like oh no let's not go to Spain we were the last year now we're going to no it's like no all these <laughs> all these things this is just examples that I give to to make yeah speaking from my own experience like the tendency to bring something from the past and hold it it's like how can I ever trust you if I keep holding on to something from the past how can I communicate with you if you not completely trust me? And so on. How can we communicate if I'm not able to say it completely expose what's going on within me with you? So this is this is where this really has to do with. So how can you be open to receive an holy instant and, and recognize your oneness with your brother? if you want to make a deal about how to deal with each other and, and what we can do what cannot do like that would be a total denial of the freedom that comes from the recognition of our wholeness now if you want to experience wholeness this is the prerequisite for it that you allow that to occur to yourself so recognizing that 
in the relationships that you had so far, guilt was a was a big one, like um, the control, like the emotional control, possessiveness uh, was an important uh, ingredient of the relationship. Whether that was completely brought to the service or whether you did, were playing this game within your mind, still pretending a body in the same house with another body in the same house seeing that as an as a unity you know so these things yeah that's that's great uh, great learning material great great material to work with in this miraculous work you know it's like here you can see so many things happening so everyone has an has an inherent idea about freedom in the relationship and perfect love you have an idea about that in your mind like you recognize that just as you recognize the idea of perfection and absolute beauty you you have a feel for that so and, and this can come to life in you now so the only thing for you to do then to let that come to life in you to to completely allow this holy instant to say give it yeah to let it be completely holy is then to to release all the yeah the patterns the mechanisms the the little laws you made up for yourself your your um, anger guilt a trip that you were on with one another so all this is going on is in the release mode so to speak in our awakening and and it's up to you to let that occur but you got to know where it exactly lies like do you recognize the moments that you are angry in your relationships that that guilt has entered in like you do this for a very specific reason and it actually has nothing to do with anything like just like we said in the in lesson eight it's like it actually deals with making something from the past holding it against someone or literally finding somebody guilty in his doings with a very good reason for it yeah a very good reason um, it's called attack well that's not a good reason so it's like forgiveness becomes impossible it is completely related to what it is that you value yeah so so this is in, very interesting to me to to read this so i bring back the last page of this and uh, repeat it once more oh yeah here forgiveness 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 lies in communication, as surely as damnation lies in guilt. Yeah? If somebody is guilty, if you see somebody is guilty, you have reason to attack, you have reason to condemn. It is the Holy Spirit's teaching function to actually instruct those who believe that communication is damnation, that communication is salvation. Here, there's no concealment, no private thoughts. The willingness to communicate attracts communication to it and overcomes loneliness completely. You know, see, this, this echoes, doesn't it? It's like this echoes. Here, there's no concealment, like there's nothing kept secret. No, it's completely transparent. It's like you look right through it. You have nothing to hide, nothing to defend, nothing to attack. Just bringing it out in the open. This willingness of you to communicate actually attracts communication to it and overcomes loneliness completely. And you understand that your completion is God's whose only need is to have you be complete for your completion makes you his in your awareness your completion makes you 
his. Your completion makes you his in your awareness. His completion in your awareness. See, this is this is what I meant in the beginning too. When I shared it, it's like this is not just some words that are being shared. No, this is actually the alchemy of awakening. You could say this is really like the alchemy, because because your willingness, for instance, what he says, like your willingness to communicate, to really be open and communicate in all honesty, to to be completely transparent and consciously. Um, not hiding anything is what attracts the communication. See, that's where the where the alchemy is. You could say, like that attracts it. It brings new opportunities for you. So this is good to know. So so like you cannot be satisfied until you experience perfect love. Where do you look for that in a special love relationship where you cannot find it? Or where do you say you're not looking for that there anymore, but suddenly start to come into your say new way of communicating inside of you and being completely transparent in what goes on in you? Then you see that you suddenly that communication say lands on you. Suddenly it is there in your within your reach. It is there. It manifests itself because you are made ready to receive this holy instant. So this this is really like the preparation for peace of mind too, because in no uh, special relationship you can be at peace. For moments it can look like that, but it's like there's still uh, there's still <laughs> yeah, what you call it? It's like you still have your ammunition ready to go. You still can be attacked. You can still be distrusted. You can still you know all this since you have put things outside yourself and say carefully put it there and keep it there it might collapse and fall back to you coming back to you and it might attack you what appears to be an attack from outside but no you did your investment you you already say put it out there to attack you when it comes back to you so now to to say alleviate yourself to to make yourself free of this this pattern the first start is to become transparent and share and share in the sense of being willing to to expose everything and not keep anything to yourself but giving everything to spirit or share with a good friend or who knows what you know how that goes it's like well it is interesting to see, like if you become really open, if you start to have experiences of holy instances, while you are also in so-called special relationship, it can be quite interesting too, because it seems like that I can communicate with someone so easily, communicate, like recognizing our one-mindedness with one person, while the one that I'm in, in a special relationship, starts to fight. It's like, I've been in that conflict, absolutely. So, and, and, and that's interesting, but because then it seems like you're in the middle of everything. You know what it is to communicate, and you know also that, yeah, you still hold on, in fact, to, to something that you don't want, uh, but you did not let go yet, you know. So this this is an interesting situation. I'm, yeah, I speak for myself. I was in there for a long time. So then it's always like experiencing the wholeness and the perfect communication in, at one point, and then the next moment it can still turn back into an attack mode or a guilty trip uh, kind of thing. 
but see if i stay in my center and if i stay with my say the purity of mind keeping an open transparency like becoming an open transparency and and in fact have nothing to hide then then nothing can go wrong like that's literally the uh, the way out of that so especially when you're in the middle of that like when you have and your moments of light and love and moments of in intense <laughs> anger or attack that there's something to learn like and that can only be learned by you like what is it that you value what are you taking like are you ready to receive perfect communication now by being completely open and not hiding anything f for yourself see and that is totally lovely in fact it is really what self-forgiveness is so seeing that <clears throat> that that communication is your salvation instead of something to be afraid of in case that you might lose something it's like no that's not the case at all so the holy spirit teaches as it says in the text too it's like the holy spirit teaches that this holy instant this communication is your salvation then the rest takes care of itself you could say yeah. all right so that was the part that i thought like i have no idea what to do with this like i i will read it but i have no idea how to express any of this and you see that it still works like it it will be given what to say and that's so wonderful and this was so perfect when I read it. It's like, oh my God, that's really the section of this chapter. Anger must come from judgment. And judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me. Huh. So anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself. To keep the miracle away from me. Wow. So are you able to judge? No, you're not. You're not able to judge. You have no idea. See, your ideas are based on the past and the past is gone. So you're not thinking at all when you're judging. But anger must come from this judgment that you cannot make. It's the weapon that you use against yourself to keep the miracle away. And you wonder why things are not working. Like, I'm still so angry. I cannot believe it. I cannot get rid of this anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's the answer. Father, I want what goes against my will. And do not want what is my will to have. Something is wrong with me, God. Something is wrong with me, Father. I want what goes against my will, what doesn't feel good at all, and all this. And do not want what my will to have. What it is, What is my will to have? Like what really will bring me peace, I don't seem to want. I need help. Straight in my mind, my Father. It is sick. But you have offered freedom, and I choose to claim your gift today. And so I give all judgment to the one you gave to me to judge for me. He sees what I behold, and yet he knows the truth. He looks on pain, for instance, and yet he understands it is not real. And in his understanding it is healed. He gives the miracles my dreams would hide from my awareness. He gives the, the miracles my dreams would hide from my awareness. Let him judge today. I do not know my will, but he is sure it is your own. And he will speak for me and call your miracles to come to me. Anger must come from judgment, and judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me.
So I, I have this in French too, so we'll listen to Michel sharing this. La colère doit venir du jugement. Le jugement est l'arme que je voudrais utiliser contre moi-même pour garder le miracle loin de moi. Père, je veux ce que je veux ce qui va à l'encontre de ma volonté et je ne veux pas ce que ma volonté est d'avoir. Redresse mon esprit, mon Père. Il est malade. Mais tu as offert la liberté et je choisis de réclamer ton don aujourd'hui. Ainsi, je remets tout jugement à celui que tu m'as donné afin qu'il juge pour moi. Il voit ce que je contemple et pourtant, il connaît la vérité. Il regarde la douceur et pourtant, il comprend qu'elle n'est pas réelle. Et dans sa compréhension, elle est guérie. Il donne les miracles que mes rêves voudraient cacher à ma conscience. Qu'il juge, lui, aujourd'hui. Je ne connais pas ma volonté, mais il est sûr que c'est la tienne. Et il parlera pour moi et appellera des miracles à venir à moi. Écoute aujourd'hui. Sois très calme et entends la douce voix pour Dieu t'assure qu'il t'a jugé comme étant le fils qu'il aime. Écoute aujourd'hui, sois très calme et entends la douce voix pour Dieu t'assurant qu'il t'a jugé comme étant le fils qu'il aime. So yeah, here's still a little part that we did not mention today yet. See, this is part two of the lesson. Listen today. Be very still and hear the gentle voice for God assuring you that he has judged you as the son he loves. Listen today. Be very still and hear the gentle voice for God assuring you that he has judged you as the son he loves. So let's be still for a moment and uh, continue doing that. And I'll play some music in a minute. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you.